if we have dogs that have had a problem with each other in the past, um, how do we reintroduce those dogs? We're going to talk a little bit about that right now. Um, it's not the... It, it's not the end of the world if we have had dogs that, you know, uh, we work with people all the time that have, um, usually when we work with people, it is that, you know, they, they did take their dogs, they, they introduced them incorrectly, um, the dogs had a problem with each other, maybe got into a dog fight, the relationship's not working out well, and then we get called to come down and, and work with the dogs. It's not hopeless. Um, but it can be a, a little more time consuming when we do reintroduce the dogs to each other. For me, it's about taking it slow. And um, especially if we had dogs that have a, had a problem in the past with each other, we got to take it really slow. Now, this can be a lot of work and uh, require a lot of patience from the owners, but uh, it can be done and it is, um, it is something that you can, uh, you can do. So for me, um, <laughs> reintroducing the dogs, I go all the way back to the beginning. The dogs don't get to see each other. Um, the dogs are basically uh, on a rotating schedule to where one dog's out, he gets put away, then the other dog comes out. We don't allow the dogs to meet or interact at all without our supervision. Um, when we do start uh, bringing these dogs out together, uh, again, we try to do it on neutral territory. That's not always the, available so um, we do take the dogs out for a walk and that's all we do is we walk together we go out for walks um, we're at a safe distance where the dogs don't feel threatened by each other or the need to respond to each other um, we walk we walk we walk uh, several walks this is something that you can do several times a day or every day it's it's you know we just want to get these dogs out we want to get them walking we want them to have several experiences together where they're not interacting they're not fighting they're not feeling threatened there's no um, no problems with each other um, once we feel that those dogs are are getting better and getting better and again this is one of these things where you um, you can take as much time as you want. The slower you go about this, the better. And, and you know, this is one of these things that it might take months, it might take a year or even longer to get these dogs to the point where they can be around each other again. But um, what I typically do is we, we go just right back to the beginning. We're out walking with our dogs, we're walking with our dogs, we're walking with their dogs. They get to see each other, they get to be around each other, they get to be, um, we wanna go back to that, that neutral zone. Once they're comfortable, we start just going back into this uh, uh, reintroduction period where we, we start walking next to each other and then we put the dogs away separately. We walk next to each other, we put the dogs away separately, and eventually we get to this point where the dogs have been around each other, they get comfortable with their relationship again, and then we can start doing some introductions with each other uh, and, and letting them... Uh, go back to that beginning. And if we have any problems, so if we're introducing the dogs, you know, at this point we're introducing the dogs on leash. If we have any problems, we just go back to that neutral zone where we're walking and we continue to do that to the point where um, they relax again and we try to go back to those introductions. Um, it can take some time, um, but it's not impossible. The biggest thing that we wanna do, and this is not just for dogs that have had problems before, but just the dogs uh, from the very beginning is, those first several times that we're introducing our dogs to our, our other dogs, to our families, to our, uh, our cats, our birds, our, you know, anything that lives in the house with us that's gonna be a part of our dog's lives, is we wanna make sure that all these interactions we're supervising and we're managing and we're, um, we're able to step in when, if we feel like things are gonna get too, too crazy. Um, and we're able to sit here and work on these, these behaviors and not allow any problems to happen from the beginning. And at some point, things come together where we like it and we start to trust them a little bit more and eventually we can get to a point where um, <coughs> we can, you know, uh, again, it's, it's one of those things that's really kind of up to the owner where we can allow these dogs to be around each other, um, supervised, and then if you feel comfortable, you can go into that unsupervised mode. But for me personally, uh, for example, we have uh, four males that uh, if they were to be out in the yard together, they wouldn't get along with each other. Um, they start trying to work out things on their own and it just doesn't turn out well. So um, these guys can go out with each other when we're there. We can let them out, they'll run, they'll play, they'll, they'll do everything. Um, we go hiking with them all the time so we can go out into this group and be hiking. But Again, we're kind of that, the leaders of that pack at that moment. We don't want them to start making up their own rules when we're gone. So when those guys are together, we're supervising them. We're with them. Um, and then when we're not around, those guys are separated. So, um, you know, then there's, there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Again, it goes into management, managing your dogs, managing your um, 
managing your lifestyle so that things get along better.